We're now going to take a look at the movements of the radiocarpal joint, also known as the wrist joint. I'm showing you here a palmar view or an anterior view. This is the front of the hand here, front of the wrist, of course. Here we see the distal end of the radius as well as the ulna, scaphoid and lunate, and then the rest of the carpal bones. So flexion is a movement of bending the wrist so that it comes towards the front of the forearm. So if I take my own hand, it's flexion. Extension is a movement, obviously, in the opposite direction, coming backwards or bending your wrist back. Extension. There are two other movements in the wrist. One of them is called radial deviation. And by no surprise, this is the movement of the, the hand and wrist towards the radius, radial deviation. And then the movement towards the ulna, ulnar deviation. So just on that, on myself, it's radial deviation and ulnar deviation. If we take a look at the other joints moving up into here, of course, are the metacarpals. That's in the fleshy part of your hand, the palm of your hand. Metacarpals, five of them. We're now going to look at the movements which actually occur at these joints here. These are called the metacarpophalangeal, metacarpophalangeal joints. The movements at the metacarpophalangeal joints are Spreading apart, which is abduction, abduction, bringing back together, adduction. And then these joints, of course, are also capable of flexion, making a fist at the knuckle joints and then returning back into extension. When we look at the movements here at these joints in the phalanges, they are capable of only flexion and extension. Flexion and extension.